In this DIY, I'll be using three pieces of this MDF board. The board is one inch thick. I actually wanted half an inch, but they didn't have it in stock. Now, because I used this particular board, my wall divider turned out really, really heavy. And the reason that I chose this particular board is because I'm going to paint on one side of it. Now, if I had to recreate this, I would use a lighter board. I would do a little bit more research to see if I can find something lighter with a smooth surface. Okay, so let's get started. I'll be using these spray paints from Walmart. Here I have a teal color, and I'll leave the name linked below. I also have silver metallic. Now the teal paint does not have a metallic look to it, so I'm going to use one of these metallic acrylic paints to go over it, so it'll match better with the silver metallic paint. So now I'll take all three pieces outside. I'll paint one half silver, and the other half blue. Okay, I'm back and as you can see, I'm done spray painting my boards. As you can see on the two boards on the right, I've already added the blue metallic paint and I also went over the silver spray paint with some silver metallic acrylic paint that I had on hand as well. So now I'll just demonstrate what I did. I'm going to use this particular one and it's called Blue Topaz. This little paint kit from Dollar Tree and it's perfect for this job. Okay, not too much to explain here. I poured paint into the tray, loaded on my roller, and then rolled it onto my board. Now I'll let this completely dry, come back in with a second coat. Okay, so I'm done applying the second coat. So what I want to do is take the little brush that comes in the kit and just dab it a little bit in the paint. Just dab it a little bit. What I'm doing here is dry brushing it pretty much to blend the two colors together. Now I'll let the second coat completely dry. Then I come back and do the silver side. Here's what I'm going to use as far as the silver, and I picked this up at Michael's. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to let this completely dry, and then um, come back and start decorating it. Some of this beautiful chunky glitter that I purchased from Michael's. This glitter that I mix is green and blue. And next, I'll roll on some Mod Podge with another foam roller from Dollar Tree. I rolled on a generous amount of the Mod Podge. Then I used a really fine glitter. I held it up high and sprinkled it onto the Mod Podge. Next, I pour some of the chunky glitter into my hand and then use my fingers to sprinkle it onto the Mod Podge. Okay, I'm done adding the blue glitter to this side. So now I'll turn this around and then sprinkle silver glitter on the silver side. I started out with a brand new roller and then rolled the Mod Podge onto the silver side. Once that was done, I sprinkled the fine glitter and then sprinkled the chunky glitter on that side as well. Now I'll let the Mod Podge completely dry. I rolled on a second coat of Mod Podge on all three pieces. Now I'll let that dry and come back and move on to the next step. Okay, so now it's time to move on to the resin. Here is some art resin that I found online, but feel free to use whatever brand that you're used to. I also have some crushed glass that I purchased from Michaels and Amazon. I wasn't able to find all that I needed from Michael, so I did buy some of this from Amazon, and I'll link it below. I also have these bathroom cups that I use to measure out equal amounts of my resin, and I have this cup to mix the resin in, and actually it ended up being too small, so I had to get a larger cup, but you'll see that in the video. And of course, I have these popsicle sticks that I'll use to mix the resin together. I'll also be using my respirator mask, and I purchased this at Amazon as well. I have my balcony doors open, and I have my air purifier on. 
Now this resin doesn't have a strong odor, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't harm you. So make sure you put on a respirator mask whenever you're working with resin. As I mentioned earlier, this cup wasn't large enough to hold the resin, so I ended up getting a larger container. I mixed both parts of the resin together for about two minutes and then sprinkled in some silver fine glitter. Now here comes the really fun part. I poured some resin right in the center of each board while making sure not to go over the edge of either board. Now I use this foam brush to move the resin towards the edge being careful not to let it overflow. And then I'll use it to make lines in the resin. And that'll go upward and down, just like I'm doing here. And I'll do this on each board. When I was pleased with how the resin looked, I sprinkled crushed glass on top of it. Here's a close up look at how I spread the resin onto the board. Now this is my very first time trying this. I seen it done on Sherry Moulton's channel and I'll make sure to link her um, channel below so you can go check out hers. But she did a really beautiful job. She basically used the same colors, but hers is a picture and mine is a wall divider, but it's really beautiful. So yeah, y'all really need to go check her out. So I'll finish all three up and let these dry overnight and then come back. Okay, so I let this set up for 24 hours. Now I'll use this paintbrush, and again, this is from Dollar Tree. I'll use it to brush off the excess glass and glitter off each panel. Now, if you decide to make your own screen this way, I really do recommend using the resin um, as opposed to using Mod Podge because the resin will really hold the glass on securely forever. So um, if you can, Use the resin and look at that. Look how it's sparkling. It's really beautiful. Okay, so I'm done brushing the excess glitter and glass off all three pieces. I'm actually going to keep this and call it my party mix. Okay, so I've laid my boards back in the same order that they were in before. So they'll line up right. And here I have my hinges. Um, I have two laid out here. I actually ended up putting three on there because the boards are so heavy. So next I'll just use a ruler to mark where I want to put each hinge. Again, I'll just put two on for now, but I ended up going back and adding a third one. And the way you do the hinges, you put them in different directions. Like this particular set, I put these in one direction. Between the other two boards, I had to fold them in the opposite direction so that my divider will be in the different directions, if that makes sense. Now this part really got crazy for me because I was trying to show you exactly how I did this on the table, but in actuality, it's best to put this on the floor and screw the screws in. So yeah, do that. Put this on the floor and then put the screws in. One other thing, also make sure that you drill pilot holes in first before putting the screw in. I'll finish putting this together, flip it over, and then start on the second side. Okay, so before I decorate the second side, I'm going to use a silver acrylic paint and paint a border around each board. Again, this is the metallic silver paint that I'm using. Okay, so I let the paint completely dry. And here I have 18 of these Dollar Tree trays. I actually had to end up purchasing them from um, DollarTree.com. I've already put Mod Podge and Crushed Glass on all except for one. And here you see that I just put a generous amount of Mod Podge on there. 
and then sprinkle the crushed glass on top. I'll let that dry. Come back and put everything together. Now all there is to do is use this liquid nails to glue six of my trays onto each panel. Now if you decide to use these trays or anything similar, make sure that you space these out where the hinges connect. You want to make sure that you have enough room for your divider to bend. So make sure you leave a little bit of excess room. Don't forget that. That's very important. I continue to glue my trays onto each panel. Again, that's six trays each panel. I made sure that they were all even. Then I let those set up a complete 24 hours. I'll come back and let you guys see what it looks like. And here's my gorgeous wall divider. I absolutely love how it turned out. I didn't do too bad for the first time around, but I'm definitely going to come back and do a picture using this technique. Now this room divider is only 42 inches tall, and that's because I'm using it on my counter. And it's 42 inches because that's what I got when I lined all three trays together. I didn't want it too tall, so if you want a floor room divider, then you would probably need to put five trays in a row. So you would end up putting 10 trays on each panel. Now please note that these trays did add extra weight to this wall divider. So keep that in mind when you're planning yours. You do not have to use these trays. You can use something totally different. You don't have to paint the other side. You can use contact paper. There's a load of different things that you can use to decorate your wall divider. So when it comes to decorating yours, the sky's the limit. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this DIY, and if you did, please leave me a thumbs up, and please don't forget to comment and share, and if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. It's absolutely free. Again, I apologize for the audio in this video, and I'll have it fixed soon. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.